So uh, some of you know our story about how La Crosse and Rochester came to be connected and be part of the same organization. I'm going to talk a little bit about that because uh, for us, we saw an opportunity and a need um, for uh, two different organizations who had very different needs at very different times in their life cycles. But while management and boards can have great ideas without our member involvement and our members making decisions about whether that's the right way for us to use our time and our resources, it's not something that, uh, that we're going to do. So, you know, we spent a lot of time doing research on the front side. What are the uses of having strong regional food co-ops and really growing the depth and the reach of what it is that we do in the food co-op world? And so we have all of these great things. You all run co-ops. You know all of this kind of stuff. I'm trying to create some context here. You know, we did this great consumer research. I'm sure all of you have read this study stuff that's on these posters behind me. You know, for example, the average NCGA co-op buys from 51 local farms. In 2013, between La Crosse and Rochester, we bought from 228. Think about the impact that that has on our regional uh, ag economy. In NCGA, the average food co-op buys from 106 non-farmer food producers. In La Crosse and Rochester in 23, uh, 2013, we bought from 235. So we are trying to not just multiply, but really exponentially increase our ability to have positive impacts. You know, we know that co-ops end up uh, keeping a lot more dollars in our local economies than small privately owned uh, grocery stores. So any extra dollar that we can generate in our stores has more impact in our communities. Uh, we talked about this during this great NCGA uh, research a couple of years ago about how a uh, conventional locally owned grocery store generally has an economic multiplier impact of about 1.3. In uh, food co-ops, that multiplier is actually higher at 1.6. So that means that food co-ops in the NCGA system in 2012, I think this research was done, had $355 million more impact than other retail grocery stores doing the same volume. So if you take you know, just a generic group of conventional grocery stores doing that volume and the same food co-ops doing that volume, we have greater local economic impact. So that in itself is one really good excuse for us to grow and deepen our system because we know how that reaches into lots of nooks and crannies in our community. So we do lots of good things. We support our producers. Uh, we try to help build local agricultural systems. But yeah, we operate in a market too. We have our own challenges that we have to deal with. Competition, consumer realities, or the growing inequality in incomes, uh, access to capital. But holy cow, what if we decided that we were going to use cooperation to help solve some of our own problems, not just the problems of our consumers, but us as cooperators. So in January of 2012, we decided to uh, merge with the Rochester Food Co-op in order to leverage our co-op advantage. So I want to give you just a few minutes to look at some statistics. And I want to talk a little bit about our two different markets. So La Crosse, one of the most economically depressed counties in Wisconsin. Average per cap income is 83% of the state's average per cap. And Wisconsin's not exactly known as, you know, a mecca for wealth anyway. And Rochester uh, is essentially twice the population, has twice the income, but the co-op was doing about a third of the business that we were doing in La Crosse. And we said, wow, there's so much opportunity for us to make greater impact by helping support. And if you look a little bit farther, in La Crosse, we had a maturing market. We had a great amount of support we were providing to local small co-ops, whether it's you know co-ops in the region or people that we were bringing in to help train or sending out to help train. Uh, we have really kind of constrained growth opportunities. La Crosse has the same population today as it had when I was an undergraduate there 25 years ago. It's landlocked, it's poor, it's aging. Uh, we have good financial strength though, we continue to grow. We have a $13 million co-op in a town of 50,000. 
that's a pretty awesome thing. However, Rochester has tons of growth opportunity. They had no money. <laughs> is, that, is that accurate, Dan? Can I say that? Um, they had a very enthusiastic staff that didn't have any training. And they had a very forward-thinking board of directors. So those were some really great ingredients that we figured we could work with. So we went and thought about what are the advantages that we could have by working together. We could reduce debt in both organizations. We could have better uh, access to staff and management training by working together, integrate admin, build internal readiness for growth in both stores, and strengthen our operations. So we did our homework and we said to our members, we think this is a good idea. What should we do? So we engaged with our members, mailings, meetings, letters to the editor, um, people yelling at us at bagels with the board, you name it. We did it all. We had a merger vote, and it passed in both communities. At Lacrosse, think about this, the bigger co-op with all the money, 83% of our members who voted said, yes, let's do this. Rochester, 65% of the members who voted said yes. According to Minnesota statute, so you have to have 67%. We were 11 votes shy of making the merger. So at that point, PFC's board in La Crosse said, okay guys, we've done what we need to do. You and Rochester have to decide. Do you guys really want this? So they went onto a program, and I still see a little bit of trauma in the boards of faces of some of our Rochester board members. I think they personally called every single Rochester member to talk about what it was that they were concerned about, what, what their votes were like, and to ask them to support this initiative. Uh, there was more letter writing, more uh, member meetings, and essentially six weeks later we decided to hold another vote. And that time, 75% of the members voted in favor with 100 more people voting this time. So yay, it happened. <laughs> So we, we knew we wanted a new store, we knew we wanted to grow and develop Rochester, but let's face it, we had some realities. Rochester, no money, no equity. La Crosse, we had financial resources, but limited growth opportunities. If Rochester wanted a new store, members were gonna have to invest. That was the only way we were gonna be able to pull it off. If, in the end, Rochester and La Crosse contributed equal number of member investors. People in our La Crosse store invested money to build the new Rochester store, just as those people in Rochester did. We raised a million dollars in preferred stock, and that was 21% of the project, and those people have agreed that they're gonna keep that in for at least five years. Uh, so you can kind of see our progress. Uh, in 2012, uh, we had about, let's see, Somebody add that up, I guess we missed it. But in 2013, we had 6,500 uh, members at the end of our first year of merged operation. And this year, we're pretty sure we're gonna end up with about 7,300. Uh, we had 764 members when we merged in 2012. Today, uh, actually just a couple weeks ago, we passed 2,000 fully paid equity members in Rochester. So growth is going really well. They're still locally owned and controlled. There are board members from both communities. Uh, our members essentially said, thank you for leading us on this. We're gonna participate by listening and making our thoughts heard on this. And they're showing up in droves to support the new co-op. They're using it and saying, we want to help support and spread the word. And we can see that in membership growth and we can see that in 105% sales growth that we're experiencing in the Rochester store right now. So, isn't it great when boards lead, members act, and good things happen?